Okay, and we are going to now that everyone is experts in uh, the Bragg Williams uh, full free energy model for mixing of small molecules. So remember, here we've just been considering small molecules or gas particles or just marbles, whatever you want to kind of talk about. But we haven't really discussed polymers. So uh, Flory Huggins. Uh, free energy of mixing of polymers is what we're going to be discussing today. And what Flory did, and again, we've seen, we talked about Flory with uh, basically swelling of polymers. Flory, again, uh, kind of made this kind of insightful theory and took the Bragg Williams model and adapted it um, to be applied for polymers. So there's some key distinctions, and we're going to get into that um, today. So, polymers, the key thing is they're different from small molecules because um, they're not just small molecules on a lattice, they're connected. So we have connected monomers, and this is a complication that we have to address. We have to change some parameters um, and adjust some parameters from the Bragg-Williams theory that we worked with previously. So when we go look back and we think about um, our schematic for Bragg-Williams mixing, that is going to be a little bit different, and by a little I mean quite a bit different, with lots of different complexities associated with everything. Uh, that is going to be different from our mixing of polymers. So now we have kind of these connected polymers here. They're all kind of stretched out. But then we'll have kind of other monomers, again, where they have to kind of mix uh, and are connected on our lattice site. So it's going to be a little bit of a different um, scenario, but we'll adjust and uh, we'll see how the, we uh, kind of adjust to work with polymers here. So instead of uh, gas particles, we're going to kind of make some redefinition. So we're going to say little n1 is our number of molecules. Really, it's our number of polymers of species 1. Um, and two is the number of polymers of species two. So this is the scenario for mixing polymers. The beauty of Flory Huggins series, we're going to see in a bit, is it's going to be applicable for mixing polymers and polymers, solvent, solvent, polymer, solvent. Um, so we're going to be able to basically not ignore, but recover our Bragg-Williams theory um, for small molecules. So that's kind of, again, the beauty and genius of the Flory Huggins theory. X1 is going to be the degree of polymerization, which is, again, proportional to the molecular weight of one. X2, degree of polymerization, again, promotional uh, weight 2. V1, the volume of the monomer, so the monomer volume of each species, and V, capital V1 is the total volume of 1, which is like polymer 1, or again, solvent, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now, we're going to make some key assumptions. So we're going to say that um, our lattice model, previously we said we could fit um, basically our marble or our particle on each kind of lattice site. Um, so when we are imagining a lattice filled with polymers, let me change my skin color right here. So let's say I have a polymer that's like this. Really, we're looking at fitting a monomer on each lattice site. So we are going to say that the lattice sites are commensurate. Basically, we can put our monomer, size of our monomer, on each site. And we're going to make this assumption, pretty reasonable assumption for the most part, that the volume of each monomer is basically each species has the same volume or same size. So the volume of species 1 is equal to volume of species 2 is just V0. So, and that will allow us to then calculate our total volume, because the total volume of our polymer will just be whatever the volume is of that monomer times X sub 1, the number of those monomers, uh, number of those monomers times the number of polymers here. So the volume of species 1, just to kind of say that slowly, is going to be proportional to V0, so our monomer volume, times X1, the number of monomers, times n1, which is the number of polymers. So if I have 10 polymers, each with a degree of polymerization of this, I can figure out the volume. And now, key here, the volume fr fraction of species will then be defined, as you can see here, as this. So v1 is simply going to be, uh, and, you know, again, let's say 1, for example, is going to be n1, x1, divided by n1, x1, plus n2, x2. And you see, we, you know, again, explicitly, it should be times, you know, v0, or v, you know, you could say v1 times v1 times v1. But since we know that v1 equals v2 equals v0, we're able to kind of get rid of this here. So this is the volume fraction of our, uh, again, our polymer, our monomer, whatever we're working with. So and the total number of sites is this n naught equals n one x one times n one x two. So the total number of sites uh, uh, on our lattice. So the total number of our lattice sites n naught is equivalent to the total number of monomers. So that is a, kind of a key distinction. We're going to see that in just a second. So 
we assume that the mono of these species is occupied the same volume. So P1 is a volume fraction. So this previously we said for Bragg Williams, this was both volume fraction and uh, was equal to mole fraction. But for polymers, this is not, uh, this is only equivalent to a volume fraction. It is not a mole fraction here. So we're going to see that this fact that our each of the um, basically lattice positions are occupied by a single monomer, it's going to change our entropy of mixing. Um, and we'll see how that, uh, and actually it's going to change it by a factor of one over either x1 or x2. Uh, we're going to kind of see this uh, pop up and it's going to lead to, again, some very, very interesting behaviors. And we're going to look at kind of different types of entropy here. So previously we were looking at configurational or conformational entropy. Now for polymers, it's all going to be about translational entropy. But don't worry, we're going to get all to that in good time. So uh, next time, more entropy mixing for polymers, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Have a good one. Let me know if you have any questions, and stay safe. Bye.